Burnt toast. Burnt toast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The truth will set you free, but first, it's going to piss you off. Hey, what's up, guys? Um, we're going to do something a little bit different this week because Shani and Rev, mostly Shani, posted about 25 videos in the last seven days, and there's no possible way that I would ever be able to get all through those. So we're going to look at some clips from the various uh, videos that they sent out this week, and we're going to talk about voting, we're going to talk about race, and we're going to talk about her falsely accusing me of something that isn't even illegal. So let's get started. You know, what Dave Chappelle did, man, what he did was beautiful, and Obama fucking ruined it, man. Yeah. He fucking ruined it. We were, we all collectively, we're all coming together, forming a society of love and hope. Wow, Shani, I'm so glad you brought up Dave Chappelle, because speaking of Dave Chappelle, you posted this on Twitter recently, I think it was, yeah, yesterday, where you basically say, hey, why is everybody getting so upset over videos and words that people say because it's just comedy. So everybody just needs to calm down because it's just comedy. So I want you to keep that in mind, Shani, when you watch the rest of this video. So I guess that means you're not gonna get all butt hurt by the end, hmm? Is that, is that what's gonna happen? Man, yep. we all were suffering under George Bush and Clinton's. We all were. But we knew at the same time, dude, it wasn't us, it's them. Mm -hmm. But now, Obama got you so fucking brainwashed because you went through Commons Core education. You had your MK Ultra program in. Mm. And you recite the same stupid thing over and over again. You don't understand. You don't understand. You don't understand. You're too white to understand. That is so stupid. Think logically. Another human being can't actually reason and have compassion with you because of the color of their skin? Do you not see the racism within that statement? This is where part of your confusion comes in. And I honestly think that you're doing it on purpose because you have no argument. No one is saying that you can't show compassion. That's a ridiculous statement. What people are saying is that you have no way of understanding what someone else's worldview, perspective, life experiences are if all you do is throw stereotypes on them, hurl racial slurs at them, and then when people come to you and say, I don't know whether you're just blatantly racist or you're just really, really ignorant, but you can't say that because it's racist. Then you come back at them and say, oh, you know, you're telling me that I can't say this and I can't say that. And you just come off as being really defensive and racist. And you don't seem to have any kind of empathy for anyone else. But you demand it for yourself. It wasn't like this back in 2008, before 2008. It wasn't like this. Race issues didn't even exist back before that time. The, from, from the 90s to like 2010, there was really no real race issues. It all started up because of Obama. And I don't even know why, because Obama is both white and black. We have to start coming together. We can't keep doing the stupid division thing. What is the point? What is the point of constantly being like, you white, you don't understand? Huh. Of course I understand. I've been abused. You see, Shani, there's a lot of things that you don't know that you don't know. You've said several times in videos recently that pre-Obama, there was basically no racism. And you mentioned the 90s and the early 2000s, that it was basically like racism didn't exist. And then you said, post-Obama, there was maybe an uptick of, of racial tension, but it was nothing like, nothing like it used to be in that, again, actual racism didn't really exist that much. The fact that you would say that tells me there is a huge amount of ignorance that you're walking around with. 
because there is no person of color that would ever say something like that. I don't even know of white people that would say something like that. I don't know, I don't know anyone who would think that. It's, it's ridiculous. And the fact that you are so much in this, this bubble that you think that racism didn't exist pre-Obama, not only is that sad, but it's just a glaring example of why people are telling you that you don't understand where they're coming from. Shani, I have experienced racism on and off my entire life. Ever since I was a very small child, I can remember very detailed things that happened to me and things that were happening around me. And you just have no idea what that feels like. None. And even as an adult now, I've had incidences where I've had to deal with racism. And again, instead of seeking to understand where we're coming from instead of fostering a conversation wanting to have some kind of dialogue instead you just completely dismiss our experience you dismiss our worldview and our perspective and say ah, nope it doesn't exist it doesn't exist how dare you tell me that I don't understand well I'm telling you Shani you clearly don't understand there's no way that you're going to be able to understand where people like me or people from other ethnicities are coming from if you don't bother to actually talk to them. You have zero self-awareness. Here, you found a tweet from a known racist on Twitter, and you not only retweeted it where they distorted Charlie Gold's face, but then you commented, it's from all the chicken wings. Shani, are you kidding me? Then there's tweets like this that show you have no idea what you're talking about. You are completely ignorant to so many things. And instead of asking questions, you completely dismiss it and say, nope, this is not a thing. This doesn't happen. It's all made up. And as of your boyfriend, he's an enabler. And in his own right, he is just as bad. Look at this tweet that he just posted Please explain this to me. Explain how he can say this and then turn around and say, well, I'm not a racist. Now, this is not me hating on him because he's white. I don't hate you because you're white. I hate what you guys do and I hate what you say. There is a difference. And when denial doesn't work for you, then what you do is you try to subvert someone else's culture as if that absolves you from anything racist you said prior to that. Regardless of what ethnicity we come from, what culture we come from, we are not some homogenous group that all look the same, act the same, make the same decisions, okay? I would never look at you and say, mm, I guess all white people wear the same shirt five days in a row, don't wash their hair, don't get an education get arrested constantly, have their kids taken away, eat fast food all the time, and gain hundreds of pounds while they sit on the internet and attack people racially. You don't see me pointing to every white person and saying, mm, that's what all white people are. No, because I'm able to separate your actions and your words and your decisions away from what your ethnicity is. Not all white people are the same. Not all indigenous people are the same. Not all black people are the same. So when you get on your channel and you start talking about how black people this and black people that, that is why people don't like you. Because you were talking about things that you know nothing about. And instead of actually asking questions, you're just sitting up there making a fool out of yourself. A racist fool out of yourself. I love black people so fucking much. Like literally, when I said the N-word, this dude literally said out of his mouth, I'm gonna take you for everything. Yeah. I'm gonna take your shit. 
He, he said that, and that's why I said it. But no, 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 I'm the bad guy, and he's scot-free for threatening to steal from me? I take responsibility for everything I do. Everything I do. And I don't start drama with no one. They're constantly on my ass. Yeah. I just fucking respond to their fucking prick asses. Yep. There's a fucking difference. Don't say I start drama when your prick asses are constantly on my asses. Because I'm not a fucking criminal. I follow the goddamn law. Because an understanding of police come br jumping you out of your house without a cause. It's kind of... It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Yep. And it's going to be shown. Should be. Yeah. Needs to be known. Yeah, so thank you, Burnt Toast. Yeah. For putting out that FOIA tape because it really is going to show yeah. the truth of what happens and how corrupt people are. Yep. So, I mean, maybe maybe Boulder PD will uh, stop you from getting that, actually, because, because of it being an illegal action done. I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. I don't really fucking care anymore. My life is ruined and I'm dying. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> First of all, um, every time you say my name, I'm just going to add it to other future videos. Um, in fact, I think this one right here, when I finally get to a thousand subs and I can get monetized and start getting those super chats, I'm going to make this the thing that pops up every time somebody gives me money. So, thank you for that. Um, I already appreciate you guys saying my name several times in previous videos, so I can put it in my intro. So, thanks so much for that. Now, as far as the Freedom of Information Act, first of all, it's not illegal. Like, at all. That's kind of the nature of what it is. So, you always talk about how Google is kind of like your education. Because you and I both know you couldn't even finish high school, so just Google it. As far as the other thing that you said, saying that I was the one releasing your body cam footage. Okay, look. I don't know if you guys have like a really, really low IQ, or if you're just so gullible and trusting that no matter what a troll or some friend or former friend or family member tells you, you just kind of believe it without actually doing your homework. I did not release the body cam footage, okay? I'll say it again. I did not release the body cam footage. It was rumor research. We're totally different people. In fact, I have actually been on stream with rumor research where you can hear both of us talking. We don't sound anything alike. But let's play the devil's advocate here. Even if it was me who had released the body cam footage, it's still not illegal, okay? So if you want to be completely stupid and go harass the police, if you want to go bother them over some dumb internet drama, by all means, go ahead and do that. And I'll be sitting here laughing the entire time because you're just bringing it upon yourself. And as far as threatening legal action against me, Okay, hunty, no one believes you. You guys are just like Von Helton. All you do is talk all day long about suing this person, suing that. I'm going to take legal action, and yet you still haven't done anything. You know why? Because you guys have run out of money. This is partly why you're on welfare right now. You guys won't get legally married because then you'd have to give up the welfare. Do you think that people don't know this? First you thought I was your mother, Betty, a 60-something-year-old white woman from Minnesota, okay? Then you thought I was some random dude from Twitter that you were having a beef with that day, and now you think I'm rumor research? <laughs> it's so stupid, it's so stupid. I can't believe how gullible you guys are. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you guys say whatever, believe whatever, I don't really care, but I'm still gonna make videos. So you can cry your crocodile tears to somebody else because I don't care. 
Speaking of BS, let's move on to the next section of this video where we're going to talk about voting. Now, this is not a political channel. I generally don't like politics because I don't feel like that I really fit in kind of any category. I don't like politics. I don't like politicians. Um, you have to understand that being indigenous, I don't have a very good view of our government. <laughs> Um, but unlike Shani, I'm not going to threaten to kill somebody. So, um, now who's the savage, hmm, Shani? Now why this is relevant to this video is because when confronted by people who point out something that she said that is racist, her rebuttal is often, oh, I can't be racist, I had a black friend when I was a kid. Oh, I can't be racist, I voted for Barack Obama. So I found it very interesting when someone contacted me anonymously, sharing some information with me because they were sick and tired of her using this I voted for Obama as an excuse every time somebody came to her and said, hey, can you stop saying the N-word? And this is where it gets really interesting. So let's take a look at what Shani said just a couple of days ago about politics, about her view of different parties, her view of Trump and Obama, and also who she voted for. And by the way, you're gonna figure out really quickly why she decided to delete this video. Um, but once again, the internet is forever, so you can go ahead and be posting videos and deleting them. But there's all kinds of people who who grab them and then they send them to me. I don't. Oh, oh, you're wearing a MAGA hat. You're one of those Republicans. Yeah. Oh, you think I oh, I, oh, I oh, wear the MAGA hat because I'm a Republican? Guess what? I'm not a Republican. Well, I, I am a libertarian leaning left. Which means something. I'm a liberal. And you know why I'm pro-Trump? Because he proved himself to me. You know why I'm anti-Obama? Because he disproved himself to me. Because I voted for Obama. I was in love with Obama in 2004 during that Democratic convention because I was voting for John Kerry. At the time, drunk her. Mm -hmm. I'm reporting for duty. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, that's right. I voted for him. I Don't judge too. me. Don't I judge me. <laughs> I did too, because we were so bad. Of fuck Bush. Bush, Bush oh is a fucking God. dick. So bad. okay, okay, okay. Hey. And I voted for Obama, thinking that he was actually going to change shit and and close yeah. down Gitmo. Yeah. And when he didn't go by his promise, and he never closed Gitmo. I decided never to vote again, and I've never voted again actually since. I'd never, I didn't even vote for Trump. No, you didn't. I didn't even vote for Trump. I just recently come to the conclusion, hey, he earns my fucking respect. He did what he said he was gonna do. He kept his freaking campaign promises. Dude, mega all the way. Ah, oh, damn, look at that. He put down freaking employment down to what is that to the black community what was that down to one percent one percent unemployment are you kidding me i'm on the black community oh he's so racist i know that man has actually donated his own money to uh projects to help build communities for you for you that's what donald trump did and when i heard that i was like you mean he did something that Obama didn't do? He did something good? Oh my God, Mr. President. Right. Oh, I love you. I love you. Oof, see, here's the problem with that. It's all a lie. So let me start at the beginning. In 2001, Shani turned 18. She did not, for whatever reason, register to vote, um, even though it wasn't a presidential, election year 
There were other Senate races, local and state level races that she did not register for and did not vote for. It wasn't until the year 2004 when she turned 21 that she finally registered to vote and voted in person, as you see here, in the county in which she was living at the time. Now, between 18 and 21, she was never registered to vote, and she did not vote. She moved around a lot, so of course, as we all know, every time you move to a different state or a new county, you have to register to vote in that district. This was the state in which she graduated high school in, or I'm sorry, <laughs> my bad, uh, dropped out of high school in, and this is the also the same state in which she turned 21. And of course, this anonymous person also checked the other states that she's lived in, Minnesota, Colorado, other uh, Illinois, other states and localities that she's lived in, and she was never registered to vote in any of those states or counties, much less voted, which means in 2008, not only did she not vote for Barack Obama, but she wasn't even registered to vote, so she didn't vote at all. In fact, since then, she has not registered to vote and not voted, and currently is not registered to vote for the upcoming presidential elections. So, in conclusion, the only time in her entire adult life that she has voted and registered to vote was in 2004, in person when she was 21. So all of this nonsense that I've not only heard from her, but from other people who swear up and down that her and her first husband, Doug, voted for Obama and that she was a Democrat, it's just simply not true. Furthermore, she has never been registered with any party. She's never been affiliated with any party. She's never worked for any campaign. She's never had any ties to anything. She just went that one time in person and that's it. So of course I find it very interesting that her and her boyfriend do nothing other than, well, when they're not attacking people, they're lecturing us about politics. They're lecturing us about this thing that happened in the news and that thing that happened in the news and how they love Trump and how they're going to vote for this and vote for that when she's not even registered to vote. And newsflash, Rev, I don't think that you've realized this yet, but you're facing two felonies. So if you get convicted of those, your voting rights go bye-bye. Now, you can call me naive, but I actually believed her when she said she had voted for Barack Obama. I mean, as political as her and her boyfriend are on their channels, it didn't even dawn on me that she wasn't even registered to vote, much less voted. It's just, it blows my mind that these people think that they can sit here and lie and that their lies are not going to be found out. Like I said earlier in the video, when you lie, know that it eventually will come back to bite you. And that's exactly what this has done. And as an added bonus, Shani, since we're going with the theme of the truth will set you free, your mod, Faith, mm-hmm, you know, that one that you think is just so awesome. She's been coming over to the geek room, super chatting them, leaving heart emojis, saying all kinds of stuff. So if you want those screenshots, feel free to contact me. Uh, unlike you, I'm not a coward, so I don't have you blocked on Twitter or my channel. So drop me a DM, comment on one of my videos. I'd be happy to give you whatever screenshots you need. The Geek Room has receipts from where she has super chatted them not once, but multiple times. And we even told her while she did that, hey Faith, what are you doing? You're gonna piss off your friend Shani. And she didn't care. Thank you to all who made it this far in the video. I really appreciate it. I'm getting back to more lulzy videos for my awesome subscribers. I thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.